So my name is uh, Wink Griesemann. I'm the uh, initiator of the Things Network, uh, a crowdsourced Internet of Things data network. And I'm going to tell a story about how in six months we, um, uh, we uh, created an Internet of Things data network covering uh, uh, the entire city of Amsterdam. Um, starting that in six weeks and then eventually spreading the story around the, wor around the world where we are right now with uh, 100 cities around the world building uh, Internet of Things data networks uh, uh, and, uh, uh, with together with us the, the, the Things Network. Just a little bit about me. Um, I have a telco background. I uh, started my first company in 2012. It was a media company and um, and we, um, I sold that in 2014 and then I thought, okay, what's going to be my next venture? And of course I looked in all these hype things like, of course, crowdsourcing, of course, big data, machine learning, and uh, also Internet of Things. And when I looked at Internet of Things, um, like I, I, I couldn't really get why they call it Internet of Things. For me, it, it was really like gadgets. It was, was wearables. Is that Internet of Things? I don't know. And uh, it's basically, like it, 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 it has become a trend is just to put smart in front of everything and then it's Internet of Things. Like for instance, um, a smart fridge. And we promised a smart fridge a year ago. Uh, who has a smart fridge now? No. So, um, and uh, uh, so a lot of promises, a lot of gadgets, smart forks, smart coffee cups, uh, we've got smart toothbrushes, brushes. This is a smart, a smart egg, egg tray. Um, really don't know why you need that, but somehow somebody managed to make a Kickstarter so uh, it's bankrupt right now, so we won't hear from them. And this is, this is something, I found a gadget, but actually doing something new. This is an alarm and it goes off if your favorite uh, football team in the US scores a touchdown. So, it, I mean, it's actually delivering you um, a, a new type of content, a new type of experience. Um, so if you look at what we've been calling Internet of Things, um, it, it is mainly, mainly Internet for humans. Like this Apple Watch is an extension of my mobile phone. It's an extension of my apps. It's not really like, okay, it's a thing and it's connected, but is it really like an Internet of Things thing? I don't really think so. And then if you look at the technologies behind the Internet of Things, as we called it the last decade, um, they're already really uh, optimized for connecting humans to the Internet. So you have these wireless technologies like 3G, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Um, connecting things to the Internet needs, needs something new. And um, it was around May last year when I was at a uh, hackerspace in Amsterdam and I came across this technology called uh, LoRa and uh, they told me this little device can connect up to 10,000 devices in a range of 10 kilometers. It only costs a thousand euros um, uh, and uh, bandwidth that it supports for these devices is very low so it's perfect for sensor data and it's also why these devices can last in batteries for a very long time so you can put these sensors somewhere and just forget about it for three years yeah, and it will do its job in measuring the temperature, measuring the moisture level, and measuring uh, the amount of people at a bus stop. So this, this new type of radio frequency technology um, opens a new category, category of, of things. So just to summarize that, it, it, it has a very long range. The Wi-Fi has 100 meter, meters. This has up to 10 kilometers. It can connect, to, can I connect up to 10,000 devices. Try that with a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, and uh, the, the, the bandwidth is super low. So uh, the devices can uh, run uh, and the sensors can run on the battery for, for very long. And it uses an unlicensed bandwidth. It's a regulated bandwidth, but it's unlicensed. So everybody can use it as long as you, uh, uh, you, you, you stick to the, to the rules. Um, and it's, it's worldwide. So every country in the world, uh, I think except of North uh, Korea, has, has a uh, free frequency that can be used with this technology. Here in the UK it is uh, 868. Um, these, these gateways are very low cost, so if you compare this with the capacity um, uh, it, it, it delivers to, for instance, a 3G uh, tower, uh, this is like a 100-fold cheaper, uh, maybe a 1,000-fold cheaper. 
Um, and um, if you look at the characteristics, uh, it's all technical, so it's maybe uh, you perceive this as a bit, a bit of a more raw technical story. But let me go to a use case right away just to get an idea of, of, of how, it's, uh, how it's different. And um, um, uh, this is a smart mouse trap. So if you, in the Netherlands, where I'm from, so if you set mouse traps, you have to clear the, the mice that you catch within 24 hours. Otherwise, the whole reason of pest control um, uh, um, uh, is not there. And um, uh, if you connect this, for instance, to the Things Network, to a LoRa network, um, and you make it give a little signal when uh, a mouse is trapped, then you don't have to check all these mouse traps every 24 hours. You can imagine the HR business case you can make with that. And then you can ask yourself, okay, but this whole building where I have these mouse traps, they already have Wi-Fi, so why don't they make a Wi-Fi connected uh, mouse trap? You can do that, but then instead of walking by every two days to see if there's a mouse, you have to walk by every week to change the battery to keep it connected. So this low battery feature of, of LoRa 1 results in very low maintenance cost of your sensor network, which enables a lot more use cases because the, the business cases are, are positive, positive and valid because of these low maintenance costs due to the low battery feature. So I thought, okay, this, this is a new technology. This is like when Wi-Fi was there for the first time or was Bluetooth was there for the first time. So, so let's, let's see if we can build this, 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 this network, the internet out of this network. And, um, and, and then I looked at how the internet started and the internet started with organizations and people having local private networks and then at one moment uh, agreeing to connect these networks into one internet. So I thought, why don't I ask the people of Amsterdam to buy these gateways and let's hook them up together by writing a piece of open source code together with the community and uh, yeah, let's see if we can make a city covered network because if you imagine Amsterdam and you place 10 gateways that have a, have, a, have a reach with a radius of around five kilometers, you only need 10 of these gateways to make, uh, to cover the entire city with this, uh, this network. So um, uh, I have pitched idea to a good friend of mine, Don Stolkane, he's an internet entrepreneur from Amsterdam as well. And uh, yeah, we started to do this, this venture together, this, this initiative. And the first thing we did is we went to a place um, uh, uh, in Amsterdam, and it was a hacker space, and, and, and we told them this. Our mission is to build a digitalized, open, and crowdsourced internet data network owned and operated by its users. So uh, these people went crazy. I see you are still a bit uh, hesitant. But um, so there was like this group of people, and 10 of them, one day later, were at my office. I said, okay, we're going to start this open source community and we're going to do this project. We set the goal and say that in six weeks we're going to have this city covered and uh, the first day they make the whole te te technical feasibility study is can we build this software to connect all these gateways together act as one network like your mobile, mobile phone network does and they found that we could do that within a few days. So I needed to, to ask the people of Amsterdam, okay, do you want to invest a thousand euros in a gateway because we're going to build a new internet, the Internet of Things, which is going to be open and free for everybody to use. Uh, so we thought, okay, we have to have some kind of use case related to the people of Amsterdam. So what we did is we made a little water sensor that you can put in your boat in the canals in Amsterdam. And once a boat fills up with water due to rain or because they have some little leakage, the sensor sends an SMS over our network to the user, and when the user responds with clear my boat, a surface in the boat comes by and clears the water from the user's boat. And um, that this, this related a lot to the people we, we told this story. Um, and it's also very interesting where, where IoT and where this network um, yeah, is really a, a more like a puzzle piece in a, in, a, in a larger solution, and then it's doing something at its own. And, um, I think this, is, this, this falls with multiple trends, is that IoT extends your senses, because now you can detect that your boat is running, uh, running uh, 
uh, filled with water, and, um, uh, and, 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 and the data and your action can feed in on the amount of economy, eventually triggering some surface to do something for you, clearing the water from your boat. So uh, within uh, two weeks, we had all these companies want to contribute, um, startup, startup spaces, but also corporates like KPMG, uh, Deloitte, and uh, as well as the port of uh, Amsterdam uh, uh, as well. Uh, which was very interesting to have them as a partner on board. So this was six weeks after we pitched the initial idea. We got the whole city covered. Uh, this was at my office uh, doing, a, uh, doing a presentation, the launch, very mixed audience. It was uh, developers, internet entrepreneurs, uh, but also a lot of media, a TV crew. Because you know, we, the people of Amsterdam just decided to have a data network themselves to play around with, to experiment with smart city solutions, etc. So um, what we did next was uh, making this video and spread the story around the world. And um, uh, what we did here is that, that we told the story as well, we just did, and, um, and the, the, this video ends with, uh, you are the network, let's build this together, and we talk to the global IoT community, okay, you can do this in your, in your, in your city, in your town, as well, because all the knowledge is open source, we gave everything away, you can start a community like we did in Amsterdam, you can use our logos, you can use the Things Network as a concept, and um, like the first day we did that, uh, we got somebody from Sydney, who already made the Things Network Sydney, uh, and a few days after that, it, it started really to go viral. We had like, people from Boston, Buenos Aires, uh, Sao Paulo, London, Paris, uh, India. So I think within two weeks, we had a response from every continent uh, in the world. And that, that kept, on, kept on growing. And what we, what, we, what we got us feedback from these people was that the hardware we, we're, that, 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 that currently support this, this LoRa One hardware is very expensive for us as makers because it was a thousand euros for a gateway. It's not user friendly. And how do I how do I start building use cases on top of this network? So what we did is we joined up with a product agency from um, Rotterdam and we created a gateway of 200 euros. It was plug and play, and we created two development devices that you can very easily. Uh, make prototypes, and we uh, decided to make uh, a one sensor box. It's a development uh, device with already a few sensors, and an Arduino that's connected to the things the network. And Arduino is a it's an open hardware uh, a community as well. And for us, it was really interesting to tap into that hardware development community as well. And six uh, months ago, in Brussels, um, uh, also at the crowdsourcing week. And there we launched uh, uh, our, our Kickstarter campaign. Um, within the first hour, we had 30,000. Within the first day, we had 80,000. 80, uh, we had our, um, our, our 100%, 150K within, uh, uh, within, uh, within eight days. And eventually, we raised uh, uh, 300,000 euros. And uh, for us, it, but the most important thing was not so much that we, that we raised 300,000 euros and that we we, we expanded our network with, with a thousand of these devices all around the world. But the most interesting for us as social entrepreneurs was that actually the time we spent on this was, was, was making sense, right? So um, uh, 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 embracing a peer-to-peer -peer initiative because of the romance and tweeting about it and saying, oh, this is so inspiring, and then doing nothing, I mean, that doesn't bring the world any further. But actually paying 300 euros for a gateway and a kit that's really committing to this initiative, that's really contributing to a to a uh, to a to a, a, a open crowdsourced uh, initiative. Uh, this is uh, what uh, the Netherlands will look like in July when we ship a thousand gateways all around the world. Uh, we will uh, basically cover uh, around 50 percent of the, of the populated area. Um, we had a lot of new discovered. It was the main news in the Netherlands, uh, a lot of blogs. We, uh, we won the Internet Society Innovation Award for 2015. Every week we got new people coming, we created a community platform so that people really could uh, launch their, their, their local initiative under our brand and on, under our flag. 
Um, this is our uh, communities we now have uh, worldwide. Uh, these are a few of the people. Uh, and uh, 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 four weeks ago, when we were talking at the South by Southwest conference, we announced our 100th uh, community uh, uh, already in 40 countries. We already have 100. 85 active gateways, um, and, and maybe it doesn't seem much, but you have to know that installing such a gateway will take you one day of hacking uh, at the moment. So, uh, so that's, I mean, uh, th there's a tremendous energy behind this community. This is the community in uh, Tehran, uh, uh, and um, uh, at the university, uh, I think a very interesting example there where. Uh, internet may not be that free, but, uh, but these guys are, are building an open and free network. Uh, communities in Brazil, people holding meetups, doing t-shirts. Uh, this is in Buenos Aires, uh, putting the gateway here on the pole. Um, this is in my hometown, Utrecht, connecting bikes, connecting cows. We're connecting ra radio activity meters um, uh, together with safe cost as a a crowdsourced platform for, for measuring radioactivity in Japan, a bit of device. This is in London, in Oxford, uh, connecting uh, uh, what you see here. They're measuring the water heights for, for flood detection. Uh, this is a peer to peer battery uh, local marketplace startup from Amsterdam where we kind of connect the, the, their batteries. Where you can do wildlife tracking with it. Um, uh, we do, are doing a smart parking uh, solution together with the Port of Amsterdam. And uh, so we, 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 we gained all this traction, it was a crazy idea, it, was a, it went on as a project and, and now we have, have an organization, the Things That Work uh, Foundation. Uh, uh, and, um, and we looked at all this technology and we were geeks just pushing technology like, like, we, like, like, we, wanted, like, we, uh, like we like to do. And um, we thought the only reason why this is going to make sense in the end is if actually somebody's going to create value on top of this network. So what is going to make your city smarter, your environment better, uh, your, uh, uh, your business more profitable, your government more efficient? So what we said, the first thing we need to do is we need to make uh, uh, our tools as developer friendly as possible. So we're going to focus on our developer community and say we're going to give you all the tools to make, uh, to make uh, as easy as Lego in putting this, uh, the, these use cases together. So we're doing a lot of events. We're launching the Things Network cookbook with recipes, how to, how to, how to build these uh, applications. And um, yeah, so usually after my presentation, people ask me, ah, how do I get started? So as a developer, just get your hands on our developer kit. Um, we're gonna launch that in July and just start playing around with them. Just start with the craftsmanship of IoT. Just, just get your hands to it and uh, go to our open source uh, GitHub page and, and have a look at the code and maybe you can contribute. As a business, uh, we advise small IT businesses, but also um, um, uh, businesses that are not in IT, and to look at okay, what kind of use cases can I think of, 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 of sensor use cases where I can harvest data from my environment and, um, and with the data do something smart or make generate, uh, generate value. And um, as a city, uh, if you're an IT community member, if you are engaged in your like bottom-up initiative, go to the thingsnetwork.org, then you can start your smart city initiative and uh, we'll uh, launch a, a community page here for you. Um, so, so, so that's about, about it. We, 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 at Things Network Organization, we enable our community to build their uh, city IoT data networks ground up and yeah, give the, the empowerment of building data networks to the people instead of large organizations. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'd love to hear your questions. Great, thank you. Thank you. So let's see, take one or two questions from the audience. Um, okay, we're just going to get a microphone to you. Just wait one minute. I was wondering if you can give any examples of how the Internet of Things network can have social impacts in cities or other places. 
Um, so I don't know every very great examples that exist, but we, when we were in New York, we were talking to the to the CTO office, and um, they 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 have um, social housing, which are which are actually uh, executed by commercial organizations, and they have regulations about the temperature. So right, so the temperature may never drop below below a certain point. Um, but actually, um, these landlords. They don't really care, and the process of reporting this is so hard that actually these reports never come through. So uh, one of the ideas they had is to just build, put sensors into these buildings, or maybe only like having the having the, the threat of putting sensors in, and just reporting that data directly to the government and automatically, uh, yeah, filing a warrant or, or what 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 kind of. Uh, pro started what kind of process as well. So that, that's some kind of a social process. If you talk about really social interactions, um, I, I, I don't, I, this, guy, this type of IoT, I don't think that's, that's really usable for that. Uh, the social component, of course, is that it's, it's interesting to get together with developers and meet new people, so. Oh, a few hands at the back. So we're just going to get a microphone just right behind you. There we go. You said it was low bandwidth. What is the bandwidth, please? But so yeah, um, the, e the easy answer is that you have to think of one uh, text message every 10 minutes. So it's really for, 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 for triggers, for, for sensor data. Is, 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 so you have to think about, for instance, uh, every two hours reporting the temperature or every two hours reporting the the temperature in, in, uh, in, in segments over the last two hours, or uh, having threshold applications. So, for instance, it, uh, once it, the temperature is above X, send a warning. Okay, one more hand, Nick at the back. How is the community dealing with uh, privacy issues? Um, so, uh, the, the, what we do is reroute data. So there's not really a lot of private data going available at all, right? So, um, um, uh, so the, the, for us, there's no issues because uh, the data is totally encrypted end to end. So we, we cannot access it in any way. And that's also the, the beauty of it in that sense. <laughs>